So welcome to the question answering video with regards to the third lecture, I believe it is, in thermal radiation, light absorption and emission. And right away, it would be a good time to um, point out that these subjects are not very heavily represented in exams. You will not see plenty of questions about these. And I haven't encountered any open essay questions. I've seen a few true or false questions. I've seen one fill in the blanks. So I'm just putting them all together and also all the, all the rest of the represented material. So uh, let's see if we can make sense of it all. And what I would like you to do is pause this video now so you can work on these questions. So pause your video now. Do it. <clears throat> Perfect. So let's get started. Some true or false. All, all bodies have above absolute zero emit, emit once, emit thermal radiation. And this is right out the bat correct because the, the whole idea of thermal radiation, the whole idea of thermal radiation is that anybody above any and any body, any type of material that is above uh, minus 273.15 Celsius or above absolute zero is going to emit this thermal radiation. Even me right now, even you. So this is true. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that the certainty of two properties of a particle have a linear relationship between them. And what do we really mean by that? That's kind of a catch. But what we really mean with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is that let's just say we have the location, the location, these are just the two properties, location and momentum, momentum of a particle. These are the two uh, properties that we can associate with them. And the more I know this property, the less I'll be able to uh, know this property with high certainty. So the, the certainty between these two is inversely proportional. That means that the more I know this uh, with certainty, the less my certainty is going to be associated with this. So this is really uh, an inverse relationship. And let's see what they have here. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that the certainty of two properties, like the two properties we discussed, of a particle have a linear. That is incorrect. They would have an inverse, inversely proportional relationship between them. So this would be false. This would be false. So I would say false. I'm just not true here. Very good. We're going to keep on going. In the Frank Hertz experiment, we can observe that an increase in the cathode grid voltage can be associated with a drop in the measured current. And really, I would defer you to that graph that I analyzed, in which we have the, the cathode, cathode grid uh, voltage here. And this would be the current measured. Current. And really what we'll see is kind of these, these little things. And why is that? We're always going to have a drop once the electrons lose some of their energy when they're interacting with the, uh, with the mercury atom. So they're imparting some of their energy because they have the necessary quanta. So really when we increase the cathode ridge voltage, sometimes we will see these drops that are associated with energy that is imparted from the electrons to the mercury atoms. So let's read this again. The Frank Hertz experiment. We can observe that an increase in the cathode grid voltage can be associated with a drop in the measured current. I agree. The Beer-Lambert law gives us the relationship between the absorption of light and the properties of the material it travels through. And this is in the minimal. And to be honest, I haven't seen more than one true or false question about this law, but it is a big law in physics. It is it is well represented in any physics course I've ever heard of. So maybe it's a good time to understand that this is true. The Beer-Lambert law, actually, we can solve for, and what we can solve for is if we have some sort of sample here, we have a sample here, and we have light coming into it, we can expect some of it to be absorbed and a little bit to get out the other way. And the Beer-Lambert law helps us to solve, to solve for the intensity that we can expect at any given point due to the properties of the absorbing material. So the Beer-Lambert law gives us some sort of relationship between the, the, the absorbed light and the properties of the material it travels through. Very good. So let's do some blanks. The spectrum of thermal radiation is something of the material and depends only on the something. So I would imagine this would be slightly more difficult to do unless I had this extra thing because I know that thermal radiation depends on the temperature. So I only know, I know that it depends on the temperature. 
So if it depends only on something, if there's one thing that it depends only on, I would say the temperature. And it just so happens that I know that it depends only on the temperature. But if I had to guess, it would be my guess that thermal radiation uh, relates to the temperature. And this means that the spectrum of thermal radiation would be would not be, if it's only related to the, the temperature, it wouldn't be, it would be independent, independent of the material and depends only on the temperature. Perfect. Very good. So we're going to keep on trucking. The something and something energy levels can broaden the emission spectrum of a given material. And we know that there are three ways for molecules to, uh, to lose energy, and that's, that's electric transitions, that's uh, vibration and rotation. Vibration and rotation. So really, these are the two levels. And what I mean by that is that, or rather, what, what the question persists by that, is that if I have my energy levels here, they, these are my electronic energy levels. If I, if I have some, some way to lose energy via rotation or vibration, I can actually go from here to here, or maybe here, maybe here. And I can lose some energy. And this is what all the lines really represent in the diagrams. These are what all the lines say. They can say that if I have an excited electron here, it doesn't have to go from here to here. It can just go in the middle and go over here, maybe go over here, lose some energy in between through rotation and vibration. And this is really what we mean here. So the rotation and vibration, I would say rotation, rotation and vibration energy levels can be broadened, can broaden the emission spectrum of a given material. And by that, really, what is meant is that what I can have is if I have one electron here drops all the way here and I have some sort of radiative emission, I have a photon, I have some electromagnetic radiation that is emitted that correspond to this energy level. This electron can also go from here to here and only then go down and emit some sort of radiation. And then I have less. So then it broadens our spectrums. It means that instead of having only this level and only this level, I can get any level in between. I can get this, 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 sort of broaden my spectrum. And this is what you see on the lecture slides by Professor uh, Attila. So hopefully you found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.